That might be one of the most profound things <laughs> I have heard said on this show. <laughs> oh, don't say that. I'm blushing now, geez. <laughs> when the camera's on, it's all a big bit of fun on the big red shutter. Hello, and welcome back to the Red Shutter Club. I am here today with the one, the only Tom Lane. Hello, yo Hi. guy. How are you, Shannon? You good? Great. How about yourself? I'm absolutely flying. I'm absolutely flying, nice one. <laughs> you look so put together with your hair all slicked back in a bun. I thought I'd make an effort. I thought I'd make an effort. Do you know what I mean? It's more of an effort than I've made. This shirt has been wrinkled since I put it on this morning, and I'm not going to do anything about it. You know what? You're absolutely killing it. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a look. It's a look. Bring wrinkles back. I'm 2024. You know what? Never mind bad. Never mind Trump. Let's get wrinkles back in office. Do you know what I mean? Let's do it. <laughs> Are there not already wrinkles in office? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. I'm telling yeah, far too many it seems you know what I mean Honestly, I've got, got brain wrinkles while watching Office at the moment <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness so Tom uh, you've been in this music scene for quite a long time yeah. for more than one reason yeah just tell us tell us a bit about that yeah well I, I've been brought up around it you know I've seen venues come and go I've seen artists come and go and, and you know trying to at the moment try and make my mark on it do you know what I mean um, but you know it's, I think you, know, uh, you get a, a good perspective on it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You see, you see the that there's a lot of beauty in this city, and I think that you know, it's no, um, it's not a mistake that so much good arts come out of it. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? There's, there's, you know, real, um, wonderful people, and I think that quite often you find that both wonderful people and awful people make music, but in this city, it seems more wonderful than the other way. Do you know what I mean? Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Well, why do you think that is? Why do you think Liverpool is such a hub for creativity and music? Um, but to be honest, I think it, it virtually everything about Liverpool, good, bad, ugly, can can always be drawn back to the docks. And, you know, I think it's the kind of, maybe it's the cop-out answer of every scout said that it's come off the boats. But, you know, it, realistically, the, there was no way that Liverpool was going to be anything apart from this like fusion of cultures. Mm -hmm. And I think normally when you get that places, you know, you look at places like New York, LA, where there is this big fusion of cultures, it always kind of manifests in art, especially groundbreaking art like like we've had in this city, which you know is less than a half a million people, you know what I mean? Which, you know, in the States probably isn't even a city. Do you know what I mean? You get towns about that size in the States. You know what I mean? So I'm told. <laughs> Oh goodness! Mm. Well, yeah, that is really interesting. I thought you were going to go like the the docs, the whole Sigmund Freud thing there for a second. Oh, uh, you know what? I try and stay away from Freud as much as possible. You know what I mean? You got to <laughs> give yourself an easy life. You know what I mean? I'll go Carl Jung instead. He had a bit of an idea. Or that's 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 yeah, who it was. Yeah. That's who it was. Well, I, to be fair, I mean, you you know Nas like I know Nas, and he 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 speaks a lot about Carl Jung and. Uh, I think, you know, there was that dream, wasn't there, about where he mm -hmm. went and it was the pool of life. With the, the mural that's just down the street. 100% on, on the very street that we're on. The, yeah. You know, the famous Matthew Street, you know what I mean? But yeah, I think, I think you know, realistically, there, there was only going to be one way that Liverpool went. If, if you look at the, all the kind of things that have come together to make it. You know, the, uh, the, the reason that the Beatles became one was because, you know, they were getting records off the docks, do you know what I mean? They were getting mm -hmm. the records, the R&B records from America, and that's yeah. where it's, it's been born. You know, and I think there was other stuff going on. I, I don't know if you... you there, there was called... What was it called? It was called, like, the... Um, ah, I forget what it was called, but there was a huge country scene. Like, before the Beatles, the Bill was known for its country scene. Mm -hmm. um, they, like, now it gets, like, that Mississippi vibes, do you know what I mean? But... Uh, it's a it's a wonderful place, man. It's a wonderful place, full of, like, all mad characters, as you well know, yeah. do you know what I mean? And... It tends to be that my characters go to art, you know what I mean, for mm -hmm. whatever reason. That's the go-to thing I find with the scene, is nobody wants to say anything particularly good or bad about people, so it's just, oh yeah, he's a character. Yeah, that's it. And, and it can what? mean anything. A hundred percent. And <laughs> that, That's a scale, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's a whole spectrum of characters, yeah. do you know what I mean? You know I mean? and and someone goes yeah he's a character and then you're trying to figure out what you know what the subtext is behind yeah, that you know what yeah, I mean? yeah exactly 100%, exactly 100% oh goodness so um in your own music you are a fantastic songwriter and a wonderful guitar player so tell us a bit about your personal muse and kind of how you got to where you are yeah well, i mean so i mean i think most people know that now that my dad's a musician, you know what I mean? He'd be difficult to miss, you know what I mean? Wait, um, who's, but, your, who's your dad again? I, I don't know, some guy, back in the day, back in the day now. 
Um, no, I mean, I've, I, I brought up with with the like being drilled into me the importance of music. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, I think my dad has always viewed music as like a spiritual practice, and definitely that's been passed on to me. But I mean, even beyond that, you know, my mum was a ballet dancer, and you know, she she's got a really wonderful taste in music, and and I've always been kind of allowed for better or for ways to express myself without any sort of uh, any sort of oversight but <laughs> but you know so now I, I think to be fair I'm not sure what I'd be doing like even if I wasn't doing music as as like tra- well, trying to do music as a career which you know as you know is a precarious road to walk but um even if I wasn't doing it I, I can't imagine not writing songs it's yeah. it's you know it's it's therapy and it's you know it's the way I deal with a lot of things and the way I kind of sort my mind out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because at times my mind's, it's a good, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all over the gaff. You know what I mean? A minefield. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, for anyone who I don't reply to very often, that's why. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm doing stuff in it over here. You know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah, no, I think, you know, you you sit down and you write songs and, and, you know, sometimes you sit down with that intention. But, you know, more often than not, you know, I sit down with a guitar because, you know, I've got something on my mind or, you know, I've got, you know, something really boss has happened or something really awful has happened or whatever it is. And and music's the kind of, you're, you're able to externalise them problems a bit easier, I think, if you can try and sum it up in lyrics and melody especially. Um, so I always try, you know, always try and do it truthfully. Sometimes you look back and you go, Ooh. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to do something here that didn't quite work, but you always try and be as true to yourself as, as, as possible at mm-hmm. the right time. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it is interesting because um, I've I've talked about with a lot of different artists, kind of in a lot of different contexts. This idea of like music is usually an escape for people, so to turn that into your career can be very dangerous. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, especially I think you know, I, I, can't, I you know what I saw an interview. Do you know Killer Mike? Um, he's a rapper from the US. Sounds familiar. Yeah, he's, he's really cool. If you don't know him, check him out. Mm-hmm. But um, he, he was talking about um, they were talking about like why so many artists end up you know in in bad situations, and he said that you know all artists are you know troubled in one way or another. Do you know what I mean? Without without kind of being a little bit pretentious, but you you know I think the best art comes from dealing with stuff. You know what I mean? And and that's why you find that um, you know. Definitely for me, some of the artists I love the most, you know, you think, you know, Jerry Garcia, Amy Winehouse, you mm-hmm. know, Kate Cobain, John Lennon, all these people I've always had, they've always something that they're kind of running from and trying to fight against at the same time, which I think is reflected in all of their music, do you know what I mean? That might be one of the most profound things <laughs> I've heard said on this show. Oh, don't say that, I'm blushing now, jeez. <laughs> I mean, what it is, is basically you're just trying to get birds and that, and you're like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I have PTSD. You stop it now. <laughs> oh, my God. But it, it definitely is. I know that in in my own songwriting, I'm not in music. I, I'm in music by accident, as you kind of know. I just met Paul in the hallway while some baby birds were hatching in the entryway. That's that's the story. And then it was like, oh, come to the open mic, da 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 and uh, so I just, I like to sing and I ended up here on accident. So I, I've never been like a, oh, I'm going to express myself through songwriting kind of person. But now that I've kind of learned to do it, that's the only time that I can write something good. Oh, Every, yeah. Nothing else. That's a very happy accident. I'll yeah. tell you that for nothing because you're a really wonderful musician, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Thank um, you, Tom. No, but I mean, you know what? I think, you know, um, even though you, you say it was by accident, I've heard you play before. And I've heard you sing before, and there's no way. It's kind of maybe a coincidence rather than an accident, do you know what I mean? Because we, we, Okay, a coincidence. You know what I mean? You, could, yeah, yeah, you yeah. were born to sing, do you know what I mean? I know people say that, but, you know, as soon as anyone hears you on stage, you, you get, you, you know what I mean? Hits you there, like, do you know what I mean? So, you know. Now I'm blushing. Oh, good, good. You know what I mean? I thought I'd return the favour, do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but I, I think, you know, um, in a weird way, I think that you find that often with, you know, with, with music in general. Um, Sometimes you know you you're not looking for it, but it it, it finds you without being you know like a little, again. Mm. I'm always a bit conscious about being a little bit pretentious, but yeah. you know what? I, in a way, I, that's how I see music. That's how I see music. I see it as as a as a a, a genuine. Um, it, it gives humans the ability to access something higher without um, 
believe in you the know, ground. Yeah, uh, yeah, without belief, without believing around, definitely. No, but I think I think in general, without, without it, it gives people a personal, um, a personal link with that. And I think that sometimes you know people search for that in religion or people look for that in politics, but quite often you know that that is done on much more of a wider scale. Mm-hmm. Whereas music's your ability to access something that is completely personal to you. Mm-hmm. The, quite often like I couldn't explain how music makes me feel in any sort of way mm-hmm. that made sense to anyone but I know how it makes me feel yeah and I feel it when I'm playing that it like like that um uh, I feel like I'm in, in no other no other thing but anything can make me feel that way mm-hmm. you know what I mean it's it makes me feel you know there you go you know what I mean there's no words <laughs> no words no, no words. words oh my goodness so it is it is strange it is strange and it's such I think a vital part to so many people's lives. Like even before I was a musician, all I did was listen to music. So it's it. <sighs> there are very few things that I think affect people that much on a daily basis. But it's this industry that people look at in a weird way. But it's so important. It's it's a weird thing. Yeah, I I, I think you know. Um... To a certain degree, you kind of got to separate the industry from the art, I think. Mm-hmm. Because you look, you know, you look at people like, uh, is it Mech Mikioyadis? You want to him? You had that um, hypnosis where they started buying up. It was like a private equity thing and they started buying up people's music. And that's the industry, you know, where they're using songs as commodities. They view it as, mm-hmm. you know, especially with streaming now, it's it's just made people much more able to, to get long-term returns out of music. And, you know, you know, some people will be like that. Yeah, great. You know, songwriters getting paid and blah blah blah. But um, I think you know when you when you boil it down to it, what music is is the kind of the con the an internal conversation. You know what I mean? It's it's mm-hmm. it's finding that ability to find what it is about you or about you know you and your band or you and whatever that is. But it's very personal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's all there. And the industry is kind of the um, the infrastructure that's around it to make sure that you don't have to do nothing else and still be able to pay the bills. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think I, even then, you look at the music industry and I think probably one of the main issues with it is what we were speaking about before. Mm-hmm. The fact that musicians are troubled. The fact that musicians are sensitive. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And you basically, as soon as they get into the industry, you've got this like group of sensitive people who are dealing with ruthless businessmen. Yeah, you know what I mean, and that that kind of you know dynamic between those two sides of life that are, are kind of are, are true across a lot of different things um, is what actually gives the music industry the bad name because often the people who are kind of thrust into success or even the kind of lower levels of success or people who lose a a, a rec- recording contract or whatever the issue is the they're not equipped to deal with that at the same mm. time. And also that being sold a dream that this internal conversation, this spiritual practice is, you know, they're going to be a millionaire. You know what I mean? They're going to yeah. never have to work again. This is what you can do all the time. Mm-hmm. You can wake up, play guitar and get paid for it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Which, you know, sounds like a good deal to me. Yeah, you know that'd what I mean? be great. Well, it's like, um, actually, I guess we had on, uh, for you, it'll be earlier in the season for here today. It was earlier today. Mm is um liam crombie was talking about creative well-being how he was thrust into success at like a early age and didn't quite know how to deal with it because it was this you know this passion of his turned into the career and it was all this stuff came alongside of it and he wasn't taking care of himself with like partying all the time and it just became a mess and he had to step away from it and it's like you know it's 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 a dangerous game. 100%. Even even myself, I I now work full time. Before I was it, I was a uni student, but come on now, <laughs> come on now. You know what though? I remember with you in uni, and we'd be pracking and paws, which you know for for the listeners is just kind of you know down the hall. Yeah, and we'd come in. You know what I mean? To borrow a guitar or whatever it probably was yeah. at that time or a lead. Yeah. And you'd be there, like, working hard. You you were, you were you know, don't sell yourself short. Do you know what I mean? You were, you were a grafter at uni. I remember that. Do you know what I mean? If you sat there for 10 hours doing essays and all the rest of it. Do you know what I mean? So, but I, you know, I think I think that's another good point about the industry. You know, realistically, it, 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 it when you're describing the music industry, I think people see it as this one thing 
when actually it's kind of it's more of a network of these informal relationships mm -hmm. yeah and one of the things that comes from it partially because you know the places that music being played and therefore the places that you know traditionally musicians were being found was bars clubs you know there was alcohol drugs that was all going alongside it yeah so you feel you have to be in that scene doing you know what i mean speaking to these people and again it causes its own issues do you know what i mean you, you feel like if you're not partying then you're not seeing any industry professionals mm -hmm. or you're not you're not in the place that you need to be to get and success it's, it's so true i'm gonna make sure this camera's yeah. <laughs> It is, it is so true because when I first wanted to enter the music scene, I had no idea how to do it. I showed up to the Jacaranda one night and it was a night that it happened to be canceled. I'd gone to Monday Club, but I was like, well, this is a bunch of like men that are older than me and I'm 19 and I don't drink and I'm just, ah, what do I do? So it, it took me being a part of the ditto crowd, the crowd that does go out afterwards that like, maybe not parties mm. but kind of parties yeah. so it took that to build the networking and to kind of learn some stuff about the industry mm. and because i don't drink i couldn't have found that as naturally you know well i mean i you know, i think also like so I, I completely understand that and something that has kind of that i've only learned through um you know relationships with women that is, is kind of not even really on a lot of men's uh, radar is you know a lot of these places where you need to be to to speak to these people are not safe for women they're not they, they, it's full of you know real dangerous predatory old men yeah and so you're discouraged and that's why it doesn't i mean it's not the only reason but the, the that's one of the reasons why you know when women are underrepresented is because mm -hmm. you, you've got to go to these places where you're not safe you literally put yourself at risk mm -hmm. To try and chase this dream, you know what I mean. That's not even that's not guaranteed. Yeah, you know what I mean. Even if you are really talented and you're a good songwriter, mm -hmm. and you know you've got a good look, and all of these things that can all come together, and then for whatever circumstance, yeah. whatever situation, it doesn't work out anyway. I know. I, I talk to Ellie Burke about it all the time because I always go to Monday Club because it's down the street, and I've now become pretty good friends with a lot of people that go there. I'm good friends with Ian who runs it, so it's it's now comfortable. But it took a long time to be comfortable. And that's me as somebody who grew up uh, networking with older people more in a business environment. And I, I look quite a bit older than I am. So, and I have for a long time. So I was a little more comfortable in, the, in those situations. But even like, if I think about more outside of town, more outside the city center, a lot of times it gets worse. And those are the places where there are more opportunities. Like, um... I think uh, I went again with Paul a couple times to one of his gigs outside of town to try and like scope out more places and see how gigs worked and like what I'd need to know because I have absolutely no background in music. And uh, it like it just the sleazy people that come up to you, throw your arm around you, make you uncomfortable. It's like I never wanted to go again. It's just so it's so uncomfortable. And I really appreciate you saying that. Well, I, you know what? I, I... I I feel weird saying that as a man in a weird mm -hmm. way because it's like it's it always feels like it's not my place. But the realization that the when I had that realization and you start to think about the people that you love and and for me, you know, I try my best to love everyone. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um and to try and, you know, make sure that I'm I'm being as empathetic as, as I possibly can be to try and understand where people are coming from. And to not understand that, to not realize that, and to understand that not only have I not realized that, I've gone 20 odd years not understanding that's the way things were. Yeah. And probably still now not really understanding the full, like the actual experience of that. It's, um, it was like a shock. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it literally, it makes you just like, like, it, it that watershed moment where you just go, what, mm -hmm. what you know, what the bleep are we doing? You know what I mean? Like, and the thing is, it, it can be a shock. I literally had a, a shock about this a week ago where I was talking to um, Tom Bradley from Thomas Bradley Project. Lovely guy. Shocker that those are connected. But <laughs> um, I was talking to him about, I had quite a problem last year with, I'd show up for a gig, a, a covers gig, not an originals gig, a covers gig where I was promised a certain amount of pay. And then halfway through, they'd cut it. 
they would cut my pay in half halfway through. It happened to me on three separate occasions over three months. And it was some of the only gigs that I had. And I was trying to do that as a living. And Tom was like, well, they're doing that because you're a woman. And I was like, it's probably true. Mm-hmm. But I, I couldn't connect the dots. And I was like, why is this happening? I'm like, oh, wait. Duh. But it's just, oh, my God, it's nuts. And I think, you know, I think also if the way that these things run often is, and, and this is not true of all places, you know, I think there's there's some places that are run in a really, really good way that are honourable and you'll look after people and, you know, who wouldn't do that. But I think it's far, far too common that, you know, because... They'll find any reason if they if they smell a little bit of a weakness or they smell a little bit like they can get away with something, mm-hmm. then they will. Yeah, they'll try and they'll take you for everything you've got because, as far as they're concerned, that's that's running a business. Yeah, you know? and in in Liverpool, there's plenty of people to choose from. Oh, a hundred percent. So, and it it is it's that thing where it's like, oh no, you don't want to so sound. We'll just get this guy in. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a line of people out the door, especially with covers gigs. It's yeah. ruthless, you know, and it's I. I was going to say I hate doing covers gigs and I don't. I prefer to do originals gigs because mm-hmm. I feel that's where my strengths are as a musician. Um, because I I mean, even though I, you know, I, I work hard at, at my craft, you know, there's, there's people who are far, far more talented musicians than I am. Um, and my strength probably lies in the fact that I've always had a really, really, really good musical education. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? From young, I've been exposed to music that mm-hmm. most people would give most people nightmares. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like out the womb, immediately handed honestly, a guitar. I tell you, trout mask replica as yeah. soon as I was born. You know what I mean? My mom was there like that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. But no, it is it it's you know, I think right now, if you're a musician, you need to start back on the boys. You need to, you need to, no, I know, I'm, by, when I say the boys, I mean, you know, the people. I don't just yeah. mean men, you know what I mean? Like, I see the boys, that's it, that's it, you know, unisex. You saw the comments coming. <laughs> I know, I'm telling you, listen, <laughs> stop typing. Um, no, but you need to back, you need to back your mates, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, the only way that this Liverpool scene is going to realise its full potential is if you start looking yeah. after each other. Don't get angry, don't get jealous when people get success. Don't no. get, you know, um, you know, don't, be chatting wham about people behind the backs. You know what I mean? Be happy. Mm. Be, be you know, gassed that, you know, you're doing well. Yeah. You know what I mean? That they were playing in the same gaff that you were playing a few months ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And now that they've just signed a record deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that, that by and large, when I say that, I'm not saying that to all people because I think, you know, anyone that I have any time for, you know, is is glad when you see, you know, I, I say a scouser. When I say a scouser, I mean someone in the Liverpool music scene. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They, they, when you see a scouser doing well, do you know what I mean? And I think you had a few bands in recent times where I've seen they're doing well or, you know, the the it looks like they're going in a certain place and people are, are talking about them as if, you know, they don't deserve it. You know what I mean? And they're not seeing the work that's got them. You know, the the mm-hmm. big one for me is Stone. I've heard a lot. Oh, yeah. And people, people as if like Finn Power hasn't been grafting at this for years. You know what I mean? People who, who weren't there when he was doing the boho stuff, he weren't there, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He weren't there when he was he was, you know, checking coats in uh, in studio two. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He who who was worked hard and because of who his dad is, they assume that he's just been handed it. And it, it makes it makes me angry. It makes yeah. me angry, I can't lie. You know what I mean? As someone who's experienced that on a, a much, much smaller level, you have people who attribute my ability to my father, who who weren't there when I was playing guitar before school, you know what I mean? Waking up at six and you know, jumping on. It, it's stop you know what i mean stop diminishing people mm-hmm. you know because there's there's real you know joy to be found yeah. and you're not gonna find it in them dark places that you're mm-hmm. going you know what i mean yeah so that's my little rant over with it <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but, it's yeah. it's definitely an important thing because there there really is a dark side to the scene and it's like just oh, I don't like this person. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. I understand the idea of like only having time for people who genuinely make you happy or you think genuinely care about you and you genuinely care about them because I'm a person who I don't have a lot of time and the time that I do have, I want to give to those people. But to have like petty, ah, I don't like this person. I don't like them. That's silly. If nothing else, you're spending your time on that person then. You know what I mean? That's what it is. You know what I mean? That's that's the thing. That's what it is. They're absolutely living in your head rent free. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're, they're in there rent free. Yeah. So you best just change. Pardon me. You best change your mindset. You best change your mindset and and get to loving. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Let's let's get to loving. You know what I mean? Because it it feels great to say you're having now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and as some recently especially, I've been trying to be a bit more active and and see people and be a bit better at responding and stuff. And you just realise that like most people are boss. You know what I mean? Most people mm-hmm. really are yeah. boss. Yeah. And the more people you meet, you are going to meet a few wrong ones along the way, but mm-hmm. you're going to meet people who are going to change your perspective on life and who are going to make your life better for being in it. And, you know, make ready to receive that. Do you know what I mean? Make mm-hmm. sure that you're in a position where your head is not too so battered that you can't see, you know, you can't see the, yeah. the wood for the trees. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Definitely, definitely. That is some some deep, deep shit. I'm a deep, deep guy, Shannon. You know yeah, this by now. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this has been like one of the most... Yeah, like just deep zenny vibe interviews i think we've had I'll take and i'm that. here for it i'll take that do you know what i mean i um no you know what? i was i was i was made up when you asked me to come on and i and i think you know part of it i'm not gonna lie i was sitting on the bus before and i was like you know if I, if anyone's listening what do i want to tell them if they listen to me a little bit mm-hmm. and it's you know you know the, you know life feels awful sometimes life really does get on top of you but there's ways where you can, you know, reduce that level, yeah. you know what I mean, by mindset. And, you know, sometimes things happen where it makes life difficult. And I'm not trying to detract from that because, you know, you've got to deal with them situations. And mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, you are going to be upset and sometimes you're not going to feel good. But, you know, if you can change your mindset where you, you're loving people and you're trying to be kind and you're trying to, you know, be empathetic, you realize that, like, that makes all that other stuff easier to deal yeah. with. You know what I mean? And also, you uh, you have loads of fun. <laughs> and I think that's the big thing. Like, that that's not to be sniffed at. Having yeah. loads of fun is boss. Mm-hmm. Like, you can probably imagine, you know what I mean? It is, it is. But yeah. So, I think on such a positive note, we will head off to our couch concert, which we definitely haven't already recorded. Very excited to get to playing that next. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell us a bit about the song? Um, yeah, um, so I try not to tell people what it's about, you know what I mean? I like people to make their own minds up, but me too, you know what I mean? Like, I'd, you gotta respect the audience, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Let them relate to it however they feel. But, um, what I will say is that it's a little bit of a banger, you know what I mean? It's a good tune. It is. I hope, I hope you all agree. And you need to show me that chord before you I leave. will, I will. Do you know what? I keep on going to text you and then like looking it all up, you know, one of them first chord generators and then go like that. And then by the time I've, I've ended up just like reading some Wikipedia article about politics or something, you know what I mean? My we love going, ADHD. Yeah, it's great, man. It's great, man.
day without the fuse away as us. Let me just slip away, just for a second and I'm gone. I'm caught in a storm blast, so help us sleep. Falling asleep in the sea, oh my heart. Lovely, Tom. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anything you want to plug before we get going? Um, you know what? I've got... So, get on the stump, obviously. That's my band. You know, Connor Abraham, beautiful yeah. man, beautiful songwriter, mm-hmm. all of that. Uh, Paul's new track, the bassist in the band, Nebuchadnezzar, one of the oh, best releases, I, in my opinion, one of the best releases in Liverpool for many, many a year. Um, yeah, and just... You know, Stay active, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let's get going. <laughs> Let's go. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for coming on and joining us, Tom. Thank you for having me, Shannon, about the ball. Thank you very much. So thank you much, and thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs>